a great uh, bread and what a piece of A lot of text today. Please stay with your Bibles open. Matthew 25, Started on verse 6. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming, to out, is coming out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and, to, and the door was shut. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> we are... We are talking about the books of songs, the more we talk, the more we see news. Why? Because the word of God is abundant. It, it's renewal. It's not a static thing. That's not up to date. That's old. The word of God is current. There's no there's no changes. No no deviation or improvise from the part of God. What we have to understand is that in the time of God, there's no space. Understand? Our time is infinite. It's finite. It's, finite. it's counted. And you can then you can make some adjustments. You can make some repairs in the aspect, the financial aspect, professional. They start their life, try to imitate the parents. I'm gonna be a good father. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna be. I wanna follow the career. Yeah. Yeah. There sometimes. Sometimes the father sometimes say, "Don't, don't try. Go to have a scholarship. Try to do a doctor. Try to be a. Try to have a degree. Nothing against being a, a painter, a working, a, you know, carpenter. You could be successful. I'm not diminishing any work or any professional." It depends on the condition of the, each person, the form that you want to live. I'm not here to diminish any those who do, don't have s s degrees or what I want to say is that 
that in our time, in a human time, we can make adjustments. In the time of God, in the God's watch, He knew everything. It's continuous. You understand where I want to come from? God was not taken by surprise when Adam, in the beginning, Come on, Don. You put myself in a difficult situation. Now I'm gonna have to go with the plan B. No, there's there's no plan B. God was not made by surprise. He knew exactly. The same way that God knows tomorrow. God knows our tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll live there. What happened to Genesis? It was necessary that that to happen so the project of God, the prophetic project of God was implemented in the mankind, in the main life. And so that the man's project, which was Adam's project, was something that he improvised. Adam and Eve improvised something. And this is looking, looking, looking good. It's looking very nice. Very nice, it's looking good. He went there and got some plants, flowers, and he made himself a, a garment. With, with leaves, one, two, three, four days, it was going to dry, those leaves, it was going to fall off, and the, nude, and the nudity would be seen again, but God, no, God takes an animal with sacrifice, his blood was shed, and then he made garments with the with those animal skin. For the for the disobedience of the man, for the sin of the man, the victim was sacrificed pointing to Jesus. The animal had nothing to do with that. Adam went over there. Uh, he, was, he was gonna hear Eve and she heard the serpent and the, and the animal was there with no, nothing to do with that and he paid for it. The victim was Jesus. The die for us sinners. The die for us that we are disobedient and the disobedience takes us away from God so the word of God is always current it's alive it's and, and it brings to us great teachings it teaches through the Holy Spirit because it was the Holy Spirit that whisper in in the ears of the of the authors and it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of the Word of God without the Holy Spirit without the blessing of the Holy Spirit the man doesn't understand the project of God right we talk about this parable. We talk about the parable of the ten virgins. And this week, a question was made in this way. 
make a comparison that what happened in Book of Songs in chapter 5. So we have clearly to understand the question. We can't be outside of the text. There is a context which is important, has some importance. You show here, you show there. But we need, we need to stay on the question. The task was make a comparison with Books of Song 5, with the moment here. Both moments speaks about the rapture of the church. A moment that the church was taken, that the church lived and will live, says in the text, lived, but the church will live that moment, this prophetic moment, this unique moment, reserved only for, ch for the church. Okay? Books of Songs. Two talks about a, talks about a, a character was sleeping, and at the same time, we know that that all the time talks about the woman self, the self, prophetically, the Holy Spirit is talking in the spiritual aspect. The aspect of the woman as a church, the, the faithful church and the unfaithful church. There are there there's there's this comparison. Every time the church talks about a woman, many times the majority of the times the Bible is referring to the church in the in the prophetic faithful and unfaithful way to God. And Books of Songs 5 talks about the unfaithful church. That one that was sleeping but her heart was grooming. And she prepares, she opens the door, and the groom has already gone. It happened with the unfaithful church. Because in Books of Song 5, chapter 2, in the moment that she was sleeping and in awake, she was, nobody goes to a funeral and sleeps over there. When you go to a funeral, you are you're awake. Awake. You're awake. Yes. When we, when Jesus dies on Sunday, the sisters go to the, go see his body. What does that show us? that they went to see the body, the physical body of Jesus. They didn't go remembering the prophecy that Jesus would resurrect, that, that Jesus was going to resurrect. They had already forgotten that. And it happens a lot when the church, when the person becomes unfaithful to the church because that person forgets what is prophetic and it is only remembering the history of Jesus remembering the physical body of Jesus those sisters went there with all the good intentions they, they, could, they couldn't do that when he died because the body of Jesus was taken in a hurry and from the cross because it was getting dark his body was taken 
in a hurry, he was taken to the to the grave. And what they were gonna do on Sunday could have could have been done in the moment that he was and then the moment that he died on the cross. You know, they would take them from the cross, put it in there. But as a custom. But they couldn't do that on a Friday, they did it on Sunday. So they forgot that Jesus wasn't going to be there. They forgot. So they're unfaithful. He forgets easily about the prophecy. The person when it's unfaithful to God, that person forgets the blessing of the Spirit. It avoids the avoid everything that God wants to do in their life. The unfaithful forgets easily. One of the characteristics of the unfaithful person is to forget what the Holy Spirit is talking to him. You see easily the unfaithful doing that. The unfaithful forgets about the fasting, forgets about praying. If He forgets about the moment that, that he needed to be praying for God, the sanctification, and he forgets about that. He only remembers when there's a problem. The thief comes in, please start pray, run. That's unfaithful. Am I going too fast? No. The sisters that went there went with that intention. They went to they want to groove the body of Jesus. The man when he is faithful to God. He's always putting in his life the spirit the spiritual first the blessing of the his spiritual prioritizing what is from the spirit he's going to look for work he's going to make a travel everything that he does if he changes if he moves from one city for another uh, if i want to move someplace a different city they look for a church they they always I always look to see if there's a church around, what kind of obstacles I'll have to see a church. Sometimes people people go on vacation, but they plan to at least go one service. I'm going to go to different places. I go to Recife, I go to Boston, any place. They, you see that the faithful is always value what is prophetic. He's going to take his vacation, go to the beach, barbecue, spend money. And there's a moment he doesn't forget about the prey. What I want to say is the faith is always alert to what's eternal. Does he do it by himself? No. He does it because the Holy Spirit that is in his heart takes, takes him and the family to worry about it. You see the difference? The difference from the unfaithful. So let's go to the text. Let's compare five books of songs of Solomon 5 and Matthew. Ten virgins were invited to participate in a wedding. Five of them were called foolish and five were called prudent. 
So all of you know that. But what's the difference between the foolish and the prudent? Why, why would they call foolish and prudent? But in the midnight, on the watch of God, midnight, in the moment, there's a moment where Jesus would come at midnight, the watch of God, in the end of one day, in the beginning of the other day, Jesus will return. In the time of God, forget about our time, the, the time of God, it marked that Jesus would come. This midnight in the could be five minutes for us. It could be in ten years from us. It could be five years from now. Or it could be a hundred. We don't know. That's the secret. The fact that you don't know more than ever, you have to be have to be conducted by the Holy Spirit. That was the big mistakes of the foolish. Why? Because all of them had lamp. They had a lamp on their hand. But the difference is five of them had extra oil to maintain that lamp on. And five of them didn't have it. So when the groom came in, knocked the door, calling them to show themselves, to show their face. Five of them had oils, so they, they take the extra oil, pour more in the lamp, and then the lamp remained on. The five that did not have extra oil could not put oil, pour oil in the lamp. So what they did, give me some of your oil. And they say what? No. No. I'm not going to give this oil. Because then I will lack oil. So that's the scenario. Why? Because in the rapture moment, And the lamp, full of oil, with the light, talks about your salvation, individual. Everybody has that. The salvation of God is individual. Your call, the moment that you accept Jesus, as a savior of your life, it's not something individual. It's your experience with the God. It's your moment with God. It's your time with God. This you cannot share with anybody. You cannot share with anybody. You cannot, the more you can share this, your salvation, with your son, the son that you carry in your belly, the son that you saw the, on the birthday, the, the son that you lost many nights of sleep that you saw growing. The more You cannot, you cannot let him go to the heaven in your place because the salvation is individual. It's not inheritable. You, can, you cannot transfer that. You can't share with it anybody. Is that clear? The salvation that's living with Jesus today, it's, it's not shareable. S 
go before those and abide for you. That's another point. That what you live in, your salvation is lived in Jesus. It's dynamic. You live every day. You fight to maintain your salvation alive. The, f the, f the flame of the Holy Spirit that's inside your heart. It, it needs to be on and continue to be on. That's the, dynami the dynamism of the salvation. For that you need the Holy Spirit, which is the extra oil. In that moment, you are with sanctification that you take and pray, that you come to the service, that you read the Bible. You need to maintain that on. Because at any moment, the groom will come. And when the groom comes, he will knock on the door. And you uh, have the extra oil on your lamp, and the lamp is on, you will, you say, you are you're him. But the role of the church is to conduct those those who are ignoring or that did not stay alert to seek the Holy Spirit, to to go get extra oil, to seek for a blessing, so they can maintain the salvation, which is individual to live in their hearts, right? In this moment, the church has a very important role. Why? We are going to share as a church, as a life saved in Jesus, we are share with those who are arriving, new ones, the blessing of the salvation the benefit of the salvation. I'm not going to give my salvation, but you are going to acquire it. The same way I, I reached the Holy Spirit because it made me believe in Jesus, you now will, because Jesus is love, Jesus saves, and you will preach to that person, you are going to indicate, you are going to take that person, you are going to share with that person what what are the benefits of the salvation okay you're not going to share what you know your your personal life you are going to share the benefit of a life bought and redeemed and conducted by the holy spirit understand understand was that clear? And I saw some more. But everything was right. Everything was right. But there's the, there's, there's the role of the church before the rapture and to conduct the people to live in the spirit, to share what you have live in the spirit to, to pray a message in the spirit to take the people to have experience with Jesus not as a denomination not as a leader to take the people to seek the Holy Spirit so they can so they can they can be oriented and conducted f from the, for the, by the people to believe in Jesus. Okay. John 16th. And John 16th, verse 1. John 16th, verse 1 says, 
these things I have spoken that you should not be made to stumble. They will put out the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you think that offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me, but these things I have told you that when the time comes, you will, may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because it was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? Be but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to our advantage that I go away, for if or if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send to him. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness, and to has come of judgment of the sin because he did not believe in me of righteousness because I go my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into the truth for he will not speak on him on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will let you things to come. Understand that? Okay. We're here almost 10 years. Okay. Yeah. It's very good to be here with you. Great service. My, my friends. The but I have to go. I can't stay here. Because if I don't go, nobody will believe me. And I need to go. Because when I go, the Holy Spirit will come. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit to do that, you, to make you believe in me. Understand? That's why the church does not preach what it has as a human because Jesus preach preach preached Judas sold Jesus Peter denied Jesus he left when Jesus died everybody left only three days later that the sisters were there that they saw the body of Jesus the disciples went to well all sad like a like a little dog when it fell off from the from the moving truck the dog when it falls from the moving truck they don't know where they are it happens Jesus says I have to go because if I don't go no, I have to go because all the things I've done is not going to make any sense oh, because it's the paper of the Holy Spirit that's why the church has to take the man to have experience with the Holy Spirit we have to share we have to share with you this testimony this orientation that's the role of the church but in the rapture time you have to leave your salvation and your salvation it's not shareable because your praise belongs to you and you're going to amen pastor sabado so like to help with something in relation to share the blessing of the of Lord in our life. There are three texts that talks about that. The first text is in Acts 
of Apostles, chapter 3, when he talks about Peter and John went to Peter and John went up together to the temple and a man lame from birth was being carried and there was a man that was handicapped they always ask for then Peter said Peter gave him and John said look at us so pay attention to them expecting to receive something to them. then Peter said I have no silver and gold but I give you that I have in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rising up and walk he took him by the right hand and raised him immediately from his feet and ankles there's another verse that talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul was on his third trip and he arrived in the city and he asked the people receive from you the Holy Spirit and they said we haven't even heard there's a spirit the Holy Spirit and asked them what are you baptism what are you baptized on And, this, and, that, and those who heard were baptized in the name of Jesus and then the, and came the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues and they were and there's a third text that says that talks about the feast yeah. because I received from the Lord what I've taught you Jesus in the cross that was betrayed and took the bread and shared and said do that in my memory he took the and he took the, the wine and drank and said do that every time in, the, in my memory in all the three texts he was sharing the experience that they had with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit Peter and John had experienced with they were baptized by the Holy Spirit there was a sh they shared those experiences Peter and John to restore the physical health of the man to give him the opportunity to go in the temple and in the feast it's what Jesus did he shared the bread and he was he was sharing what we see from the Lord so to to finalize some of them slept but when the groom came they woke up they show their faces there were there were oil in it the difference of you awake the dead body you are you are attached to those who are historic but the faithful church for being the servant they are faithful they're going to be there's going to be trials difficulties but the difference is when at this moment but they have the Holy Spirit because the, the, the trust of the faithful church is that they have the Holy Spirit in their life so it's not firmed and based on the historic event the, their life is conducted by the Spirit and that is what we have to fight for that our lives can be conducted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand up, please. So it's important. So we can so we can go go away from those sometimes we we go in a different aspect of the questions and confuses the people.
they are very well worked a very fast way you don't know how those questions are done in a very short time so we need we need to stay only with the question read the question Man, as many times as you can understand understand what's being said don't try to go away from that but if you go away from that it's going to confuse you it's this way that way that's it don't go into the context stay with the question you won't have a problem if anybody has any questions about this we are staying here in whatever time is ne necessary so we can all live here without any confusion. Because if there's any confusion, there's no Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is not f for confusion. Amen. It's not even a single song. Please forgive me for the time, but it was very necessary to uh, bring this word. So, so there will be no doubts and confusion about this, this point. It's a very, very simple point that the, the question was made for, for the children. Only the children understood that. Because the children will, will, will answer, because those questions will prepare for them. Amen? Let's have a glorification word. And dear Lord, we we'll glorify your name. We we'll, we'll praise your name. Because you have been the one that's uh, given. We praise you because we have the Holy Spirit. We don't let your people be confused. We praise you, Lord, for your care with our people, for our salvation. We don't, we wouldn't be anything for if it was not the Holy Spirit. We would be like those but you are the one that's taking care of each detail. You've been taking care of your people. You take care of the young. You, you, you have taken care of each detail. We praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please receive, O Lord, our service in your adoration of your name, that you can continue to talk to our hearts. That your Holy Spirit can have the liberty to operate the act of justice of the of the Lord. And free us from sins and takes us to live us a life in a consecration with you. That we cannot be taken by surprise by surprise, unprepared, but that we can be resting in you, Lord, which is our rest, which is our eternal life that one day wished us, take us in peace and give us a night of rest in your presence is the prayer we do in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace in our Savior Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured upon us now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.